Now we're going to demonstrate how to properly groom our horse. So the first thing that we're going to do is use a metal curry comb, or you can use a rubber curry comb too. But this just breaks up all the major big chunks of the mud, since our horse has a lot of mud on him today. It's going to take a little bit. Yeah, about like 10 years. So <laughs> your next step would be grabbing a hard brush to get all like the deep, like the deep mud inside of him. And then after that, you'll use the soft brush to get all like this. After that, you'll get all of this soft. Um, you will use the soft, the soft brush to get all the surfacing off of it to make it look nice, shiny, and pretty. I just tap the horse on the butt. That way, so he knows I'm there. He knows when I'm not there because a horse's fight is to like run away and stuff. So if they hear something scary, so if I like trip or I or somebody screams in the barn or something, he knows I'm there and it's not me. I'm friendly. different spots that you can't brush with that one? Uh, with which one? The hard brush? So yeah, this one you can you can basically brush everywhere. The majority, the main places you want to brush is where your saddle fits. Mm -hmm. With a curry comb you don't want to brush on the legs. Why not? Because of the metal teeth it's hard to, it's hard on their legs. So you want to stick with a hard brush. You can't use it on their face either. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you wouldn't use a metal curry comb on their face either because of the hard teeth. Is there more important places? Personally, I do the saddle mark and I get it the most clean because you don't want the saddle pad or the girth rubbing on, like rubbing against the mud and causing any pain for the horse or to be uncomfortable. 100% in the girth because like you said, nothing. <laughs> it's not comfortable. Shut it. Now we're going to show you how to properly pick your horse's hooves. So you're going to reach down on your horse's leg and some of them will like pick it up willingly or you can pull on their leg or squeeze their chestnut. And then you want to use the hoof pick and scrape away from you to get all the dirt out so you don't stab yourself. I find that the hard way. And then you can use the brush on the hoof pick to get any loose dirt out. Now we're going to use the back pick. Do it again. Oh, oh of course you're fine. Get all that dirt out. Next, you're going to want a saddle peg. It's properly done before. Left it from here. Where the, you, you'll find it, it's like naturally with like where the sits. I normally, how I do it is I go here and I just bring it down if it's like lined up with the shoulder and the stomach. I know it's in the right place. And then you're going to make sure, like, you can see where his spine sits. So, you just, so I follow it down with this brown pad. It's a little difficult when you're working with like a 16, 17 hand horse, but <coughs> it's entertaining. <laughs> so, and the next step you would set your horse. Now you're going to take your saddle, put it on, and you want to make sure that you pull the front of your saddle pad up into your saddle and make sure that there's enough saddle pad showing up front. Just enough so that it couldn't like slide back and then pinch the horse.
Then you're just going to take the latigo and put it through your cinch, your front cinch. You want to do your front cinch first before your back cinch. Why does it matter? Because if you put on your back cinch and you don't like have it connected to the front cinch and it slides back, you'll have a bronch. You're just going to snug it up, lightly snug it up. You don't want to crank it while the horse is just standing here. And then you always make sure to check your girth before you get on. And then you're going to grab your back cinch and snug it up a little bit. You don't want it too tight, but you don't want it hanging really low or else they can get a back foot in it. And you always want to make sure that your front and back cinches are connected. Yeah. Now you have your, your breast collar, which is on the other side, and you don't want to go underneath your horse's neck while they're tied. Because they'll kick or they'll try to eat you or something. It's not safe. Don't do it. <laughs> You're gonna bring your breast collar across their chest and buckle it up here. And then you're going to attach this part of your breast collar to the ring of your girth. And now she's going to bridle. One of the final steps bridling. I normally get I normally ride on my horse when I have my helmet on. Uh, my I got my my spurs optional when I got all of that. So first, these are split reins. So I'm gonna take them, separate the reins. I'm gonna put one rein around his neck, because I'm gonna ride, I'm gonna unhalter him, and that way I still have contact with him so if he does something if he tries to get away or something, I still got him. Now we're gonna And whenever you take the halter off of your horse, you always want to make sure that it is disconnected from the lead rope tied to the wall. Now you're going to You're going to wrap your rope. I normally like to get upright up against here. So I have him and then I, here, I just, I hold it like this because I keep the, the chain and the bridle actually separate. Then I'm going to stick my thumb in. So some horses have problems because some horses have problems. I would undo this and take him to the, my mounting block. So you to have to tactically adjust your stirrups. So to adjust your stirrups, to get an idea, obviously this is way too short for any of us to be riding in, but to get an idea of what you want your length of stirrup to be, is you're going to stick your fingertips up in here and then pull the stirrup back until it's in your armpit. And then to adjust, why is it zip tied? <laughs> you would take this out, like the buckle out of the hole of the stirrup leather, and then if you want them shorter, then you'd move up, and if you want them longer, you'd move down. <laughs> 